Well, before we jump into, into what we're seeing in Sparkland, uh, the overriding factors are principally around loading data around ETL, transforming it quickly, and then using SQL to manipulate it, because at the end of the day, as engineers or software developers or analysts or data scientists, the common language is SQL. Uh, MapReduce is uh, really tough to use, and it's why I wanted to kind of touch on what we're doing with uh, Spark. Uh, Spark is certainly sort of the, like the, the bee's knees in big data. Um, it's going to replace MapReduce. And uh, we saw how you could leverage programmatic procedural interfaces with Spark and merge that uh, with a declarative inter interface at a database level to really take it to the next level. Uh, interactive applications require uh, certain uh, logic that you want to build in Java or Python or Scala. And Streamliner is going to start along those lines. Um, I would say, one, again, as I said earlier, the biggest thing that we have to combat uh, as uh, scientists and developers is really ETL. Uh, and if you're writing data to a file uh, and then loading it elsewhere, you've introduced many, many hours of blackout before you can get access to the data. So with Streamliner, we built basically one-click deployment into the MemSQL product of Apache Spark so that it's easy to set up multiple pipelines and start combining them using SQL. Um, we can start off with a raw cluster very quickly deploy the MemSQL database environment so that you can store the state of Spark. Um, uh, it's sort of a, a little understood sort of fact of Spark land that Spark still doesn't have a storage engine. Uh, it's a temporary, temporal, uh, in-memory environment, and data is transient, uh, and it needs consistency, it needs durability. Uh, so complementing Spark with a database is the way to store the model, a way to serve the data out, uh, and what you do next is put Spark right on the same machines. So you're co-locating the processes, you're avoiding a network hop, and what you can do next is get really uh, good integration with Kafka. Kafka is really going to be the next uh, uh, component in a real-time pipeline. Uh, a real-time pipeline is really three things. It's a message queue, it's a transformation tier, and it's a data serving tier. Uh, I really encourage you guys to look at Apache Kafka. It's going to be the, uh, the mainstream uh, message queue, and once you have that, you can build out a full Lambda architecture um, and for this, we're just talking about uh, the real-time component of a Lambda architecture, which is memory-based. Streamliner itself is built on top of Spark and leverages Spark streaming. Uh, but the takeaway, of course, is that you can start connecting directly to the live data, transform it uh, however you need with uh, a custom script that you write in Java or Python or Scala, and then get it into a state where you can store it and analyze it. Um, the real cool thing you can do is building predictive apps with it because you might generate your model not in uh, 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 any other tool, but let's call it SAS or something in R. You export that uh, model, uh, a scoring engine, let's say, out of uh, SAS, uh, upload the jar into the Streamliner app so that you can basically connect a Kafka starting point, funnel the streaming data through the jar, score it, and then persist that data to begin your predictive modeling techniques. Um, this particular example here is basically a way to uh, build that predictive application because it's happening live. So what you heard earlier is that if you can get the data in cleanly, transactionally and consistently, because you're upserting data, you're not inserting it, you're checking does it exist, you get a clean, clean feed into your database so that you can serve out uh, very, very uh, clear and specific analytics. Um, so when you look into the data science model, a predictive uh, a model uh, that can be built in-house or via a third party like SAS is very, very good about taking a real-time data pipeline and enriching it with better data. Uh, so the, the takeaways in terms of what the benefits give you is an ability to sidestep ETL. If you're just collecting logs and loading it a day after the fact, you're behind. You've missed out on insights that you could actually capture as that stream is going through your systems. So if you can actually set up pipelines with the click of a button, uh, manipulate it with a Spark environment programmatically, and then basically persist that model in a database, the next step is building applications on top of that. And uh, I think the big takeaway that we have is SQL really is the universal language across the entire business. Um, whether you're in, in sales operations or marketing operations, uh, everyone is able to interact with a SQL prompt. Uh, if not directly, then certainly through something like Tableau or MicroStrategy or Cognos. Um, so as data scientists, we really want to share the data. And if you're not sharing it in an easy to consume fashion, the data itself is not getting full value for the business. Um, so uh, what I wanted to conclude with, of course, is stop by uh, the MemSQL booth. We actually have the panelists sticking around at the booth for Q&A, and you can continue to do some games. 
Um, we're also uh, having demos of Streamliner Live, so you can actually create uh, your own data pipelines. And then, of course, I encourage you guys to download MemSQL Community Edition. It's free forever, unlimited scale and capacity, and it lets you actually get Streamliner and Spark all in the same package. Um, so uh, thank you guys. Thank you to the panelists. Give them a round of applause. Uh, it was really kind of them to come on out. Thank you.